The media is the media. It's there, it's always been there, it's always going to be there. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has, has a right to an opinion. You better ask you, you, your parents or your friends how you played. Now you get told how you played. We see clips on Instagram that last 10 seconds. That's not football for me. I think people can say they don't read it. I don't think you can not. Well, yeah, everyone wants a story, right? Everything I want to know, I can find it straight away. We're information junkies. I've seen managers, I've seen owners, I've seen players. Really affected by it. Really affected by it. Oh, it's night and day now. I think you look at the media now compared to when I first started out. I think it's just the different types of media as well. Obviously, social media being a massive player in, in today's field, really. Now, we have given ordinary fans a voice. Not only have we given them a voice, we've given them a big voice. Fans now are like mini-managers and they have an opinion, but they're also armed with so much information. They're armed with stats, things like that, that, that we never had. You know, someone told me ages ago that if someone likes you, they're less likely to tweet they like you. Um, like one in 10 will do that, but if they hate you, it's like nine in 10. And the sole aim of this platform was to give ordinary fans a voice, because I didn't think that ordinary fans have a voice. People who just, Right, throw away comments without thinking of what the the, uh, the consequences of those are. They, they could be big, you know. I don't think the players would even worry about it. Has it affected me before? Yeah, you read the comments. If it's negative, it's not nice. And I think it's nice to get the fans' opinion, not just pundits on, um, because I think our opinions are just as valuable as theirs. There's always a game on, you know, usually your Monday night game, then Champions League, Tuesday, Wednesday, then Europa League, Thursday. The main crux of our show is about, certainly the first hour, about reaction to what's just happened in the game. You've got to be honest about what you say and you've got to believe what you say. But there's no point in being vanilla. You've either got to say something or, or you don't. Loads to talk about, one up to dog, get involved, have your sound, National Radio 08, 717. Got to sort of work out, okay, what do they want to hear, what do they want to talk about? They want to hear an opinion. The first 45 minutes, Arsenal were pathetic. Things are rotten to the core at Arsenal, absolutely rotten. And they want you to back up your opinion, and sometimes you, you've then got to defend it if fans come on and will challenge you, which is their absolute right. The rule has got to be clear. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is clear. Wait, did the referee blow his whistle? No, he didn't, no, well, then, well, then the game is continuing. It's as simple as that. Ultimately, we are football fans and we have a radio show. It's a great chance for the general public to actually have their voice heard. This is the place to be. Get involved. Pick up the phone. Have your say. 08717. Yeah, mate. Number two, number three, number yeah, four. Baby. Oh! Arsenal Fan TV troops are um, really disappointing tonight. A man come up to me and said, I'm making, I'm making the, the club poisonous, yeah? I'm not making it poisonous. This broad is making it poisonous, yeah? 10-2 on aggregate in two years, bruh. Like the Arsenal TV stuff, you know, with the, the anti Venga campaign almost. Your audience figures have rocked it. They've gone through the Richter scale at a time when Arsenal as a football club have been in decline. You cannot right. be selective in this, right? Oh, I'm going to go and watch it when it was a, a bad result and then I'm going to have a go at those fans for being negative. You've got to watch it as Tell a whole. Tell us about last night. We actually won that game last night and we've got the number four trending video on YouTube at the moment, praising the performance and the fight last night. But no one's going to talk about that. These are the people that want the club to do well. That's why they get so angry and agitated. They want their club to do well. I think an opinion is an opinion. I mean, players, I'm sure, have their opinions as well. And at the end of the day, we're the fans that pay the money to go. So why shouldn't our voices be heard? You're not going to come out of a game where we've just lost 3-0 and be happy about it, are you? If somebody comes in and they're not doing a great job, of course the fans are going to want him to go. I find it hypocritical, even of you, in a way, right? Because you guys, last night, I heard you guys saying, West Ham fans, get on here now, let us know, should Pellegrini go? Right? You're encouraging those fans to ring up and have a go about Pellegrini. And that's a good point, This Robbie. is football. I would value everyone's opinion, especially a fan who's paying money to go and watch a game. The only objection I would ever have and have had is the whole, you're not trying, or it's a lack of effort. I'm telling you, there's not one football I've ever played with that stepped out onto a football pitch trying to lose a game or trying to not work hard or trying to miss chances or make a mistake that leads to a goal. Not one. Now I think everyone needs to stop being a bit so sensitive. It's not like I said, as long as there's nothing racist or that nobody's bullying anyone, I don't see the problem with fans having a voice. 
No. So well, I just don't think we say it this week. Uh, to be honest, we, we don't have we, to. We'll say there's no sports club update. No, we no, just no, don't just... even say anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, ready, yeah. steady, go. Oi, oi, and welcome to the Orient Outlook podcast with myself, Steve Nussbaum, and as always, my good friend, South Stand Chum, the bearded legend, the daddy o, the one and only, Mr. Paul Levy. Thank you very much indeed. Talk a bit about the, the, the commitment that you're making to doing this, because we've all, like, oh we've all respects, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Are you podcasting again tonight? <laughs> Are you podcasting this week? Oh, do you have to podcast this week? And we're briefly going to cover the Bristol Rovers game and have a catch up on arguably one of the uh, most forgettable games in our history, the Oldham game. So it's the most basic yeah. um, setup in the world. It's a free app that we downloaded from iTunes. It's one take, so if you get it wrong, it stays in. Some people do it because they want to make a career from it. For us, we're just a couple of ordinary guys with, you know, with with a, a passion for Leighton Orient. I like to use social media for the positivity. We've got the Orient Outlook podcast. It's brilliant. I think they're very respectful of us and the fans. We took a, a, a view that we were going to try and bring positivity to it because there was so much negativity. But there is a very fine line between being very positive and being happy clappy. Why would you want to listen to two guys just constantly demoning the club? And we're constructively critical. You know, we, we don't just say someone was terrible one week without saying why that person was, was, was terrible. Without football fans, there's no football. You can have all the players playing in empty stadiums if that's what you want to do, but without fans, there is no football. Again, it's just trying to keep a, a balanced perspective and trying not to let negative things get you down, but also not letting positive things get you too carried away. Because you're only one performance or one mistake away from those headlines being called a waste of space or the best player in the world. These boys, as much as they're held up, whatever level of football they play at, they're viewed as having you know, great life, great opportunities. They are normal people. And I think the difficult part for them now is that there is no release. There's no getting away from anything. Kids are growing up in a world where social media is their first port of call. It's their normality, so it's very hard to say to a kid who that's all you know, not to get wrapped up in it. I am proud of what we do. Everybody gets a chance to have their say Thank on our platform. Too. We are the first people to really push that out there and to really show that we give ordinary fans a voice. We're disruptors in the business. It's almost impossible for a footballer not to be affected by it. It's how you come back from it. You have to just move on. It's one person's opinion. I think that's the biggest key for me is, you know, not to be led by other people, is, is have your opinion, even if it's not the same as what 500,000 people are thinking or saying. I know what the pressures of this is, um, and I think there's a correlation in this in this mental side of, of, of people with the social media. People are influenced and, and take to heart what, what often is said. Hopefully we can uh, we can control that as, uh, as managers and as coaches, and, and we try and psychologically strengthen our, our players, our teams. I've got to be honest, I would never, ever again let either someone from the media or a fan whatever they're saying affect me i think i'm honest enough with myself to to know when i've played well and not played well so i'm all for it as long as it's balanced and as, as honest as it can be you know and um, again it's an important part of the game you know it's it's, it's another factor of, of why we all love the game that we're in and especially this country where football is so important to most people's everyday lives you know <laughs>